fine furniture, musical instruments, functional art, beautiful decoration. These pieces, and others like them, are crafted in wood by master woodworkers who live here in Santa Cruz County and on the Central Coast. In this series, we meet some of these craftsmen and explore the paths they took to develop their talents. We'll look at examples of their work. We'll discover what and who inspired them. Please join us as we enter their workshops and watch them demonstrate the skills and the techniques they use in creating their signature pieces. Hello and welcome to Woodworks, the show that celebrates and promotes woodworking throughout Santa Cruz County. My name is John Hall and today I'm with John Mance here at his workshop in the Live Oak area of Santa Cruz. Mm. In a few minutes we'll be talking with John and showing you some examples of his work but the majority of today's program is given over to John demonstrating a particular technique that we think you will find both interesting and useful. This technique is how to inlay one piece of wood or two pieces of wood or more into something uh, into another piece of wood into a project. John uses this technique a lot in his work to great effect either to enhance the look of a project or he uses it in a functional way to perhaps join together uh, a cracked board in a more decorative fashion than uh, perhaps otherwise you can do that. So without more ado let's talk with John and get the show underway. Hi John. Hi how are you doing? Fine and thank you for inviting us along. Thanks for coming to my house. Uh, talk to us John firstly about the the type of woodworking that you're into. Basically my work is arts and craft, uh, fine joinery, uh, fine hardwoods, uh, no Ikea and uh, uh, commission work. Uh -huh. I also turn bowls and do inventory and also I'm in the open studios uh, show every October. So between the two I keep pretty busy. So it's pretty varied then from furniture to arts and crafts work to decorative work. To... Right. It, is it always working with wood or do you use mixed media? Yes I use some uh, marbles. I'll do inlays of coffee tables and end tables. Uh, occasionally we'll do lightings and uh, stained glass. So yeah I try to do a little bit of everything. Do you like working with one particular type of wood? There's not other. particularly one kind, but what I do like is using the colors of the wood, and I like combining woods together. Lots of lights and darks together. Say if we were doing a paneled uh, desk, the panels would be light, the rest of it would be uh, darker wood. And uh, not too much coloring of the wood, just let mm -hmm. the wood do its, 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 uh, its thing. Mm -hmm. How did you get into woodworking? Uh, well, when I was 16 years old, I was shaping boards, surfboards. and. Uh, surfing is one of my passions and just the hands-on work of working tools and stuff has always been around so I took a little bit of that skill and then moved on into some cabinet work worked with a couple cabinet workers on an early days and then later got on did it on my own I worked construction building tennis courts for 30 years and every winter there would be rainy times and uh, that's the time I would be working on my my woodwork so it progressed and finally I just said that's it I'm a, I'm a woodworker so mm -hmm. I'm sticking with it People can see your work at the Open Studio sessions, Correct. I believe. All right. Every October we have, uh, Santa Cruz has the Open Studios, and I've been a part of that for, oh, eight years now. So tell us a bit about what you're going to be demonstrating for us today. Yeah, you want us to work on some inlays. So what I have in mind is we can build a Dutchman, which is a little bow tie design, and we're going to fix a knot in a piece of cherry. That, all, that same bow tie design could be used to, say, fix a crack. Um, we're also going to do a decorative uh, butterfly, uh, just for a, a something fun to inlay. Mm -hmm. Part of the process that we're going to work with today is a router with a bushing setup. And the nifty little trick is it has two bushings attached to one mounting plate. So we're going to remove the bushing to create the two different inlays. With one bushing in, we'll cut the wood that we're going to fill, and with the bushing out, we'll take the uh, we'll cut the uh, fill piece. So John, if people want to practice um, doing what you're going to be demonstrating, will they, will they need any particular specialized equipment? Yeah, a good router, a good router and preferably a plunge router. Uh, mine is a porter cable. 
um, you need the bushing arrangement and you can get that mail order through Woodcraft and uh, just a little bit of practice and skill. Any particular specialized bit that you use in the router? The package, the, the bushing package, the inlay package comes with the router and uh, a bit, I'm sorry, and it's a spiral bit, an eighth inch spiral bit. But you can't use regular bushings? No, you need to follow everything that they give you. Okay. You know? Okay, well I've been asked to come over here and do some inlays and uh, we'll do a couple examples of that. I have a Dutchman that I'm going to put in a board over here. It has a knot, I don't know if you can see that, and it's got an epoxy finish in it right now. But well, we're going to cover that up with a, a design, an inlay design. And the processes we're going to build, we're going to cut out the design, the template, and then we're going to route it in and then fill it with another piece of wood. And furniture, they call a Dutchman a piece that's patched with another inlay. And a lot of times they look just like this in squares and bow ties and things of that sort. What we want to do is cut out a new template. I have two templates here. One's is cut out and for this piece it's just a little bit too big. So I think what we'll do is we'll build another one. And what I did to design this is I just figured out a length and then used the width and then I made two triangles and the two triangles meet from the center of the other side of the line which created this bow tie. I have a piece of masonite that is as thick as this bushing right here. In other words, when you, when we use this bushing, and we're going to use it in a few minutes, we're going to be able to hit this flush, and then we'll be able to cut into the wood that we want to put the inlay in. So okay, so now I put my design on. But I just put two holes in it so I can get the bushing, or rather the router, to start cutting into here. And then I'm just going to rough cut around this thing, not get too close. I'm going to finish the whole uh, cut with my chisels. <laughs> Working at, well, let's see, which one am I going? I'm going counterclockwise with it, and I'm cutting on the inside. Um, I'm sort of working against the router, but what I wanted to do, I wanted the router blade to run alongside my cutting edge. In other words, normally you want the cut to cut into the piece, but if we're trying to stay close and be controlled, let the blade run alongside. So this is a counterclockwise cut inside of a, of a blade. So we've cut out quite a bit of it, but still we just need a little bit of work in here. And then I'm just going to take a little par paring off. Mm -hmm. If you're not comfortable making straight angles, you can use a block of wood to guide yourself along as you cut. Okay, that looks pretty clean, yeah, huh? That looks good, yeah. So now we're going to route the cavity in the piece that we're going to fix. So we're going to get rid of this this knot and all this patchwork that's already in there. This router is really fun because it's light, it's very maneuverable, you can hold down, it, it comes on really slow and then it doesn't torque as it jumps on, but it's really good for just freehand control. The larger router is not so good for that. What we're using this router for is we have our guide system inside of it and we're going to take a bushing this bushing is going to run along our inside of our template and we'll cut with this little with the little spiral bit is going to come along and cut out our template. And the nice thing about this router system is it has two different sizes attached to the same bushing. So in other words, this distance between there and here is the distance we need to match up our fill with the inlay. We need to put the outer bushing on first and then we're going to cut the fill, that's going to, the cut that's going to go into our wood. The only thing you can mess up is if you don't have it clamped down nice and tight. If you didn't know where they wanted to put this, you could actually use the whole bushing to draw an exact guide of where, what your piece is going to look like. So just by using it. 
before it went on, I can see, I can draw what my little bow tie is going to look like. And so this shows me that I'm covering up that one hole and I have a nice little patch that's going to go in. So I like where it's positioned, so we'll just go ahead and use that. So I'm going to start it up and then I'm going to plunge it down. Okay, I have a piece of walnut, and what we're going to do is um, use that same template and cut out a piece of walnut, but now we're going to take off that little bushing. There we go. Because I have a very thin piece of wood here, I'm going to just nail this on. Now the nice thing about the system is we're going to plunge to the same thickness as the cut in the in the uh, piece of cherry. So we're just using this as stock and then we're going to take it over to the bandsaw and then cut it to thickness. Now this is the fun part. Now we have to be careful. The other one we were cutting a hole. This is where we're cutting an outline. So we need to keep this edge against the template the whole time. No wandering into the middle of our of our cut. I've marked off the thickness of my actual cut, and then I'm going to transfer that up here, so I know how thick this thing is. And it's really this is kind of tough. It's on a rough piece of wood. Dutchman. Okay, that's good enough for what we're doing. So the Dutchman was just to fix the knot. Now we're going to do some decoration. And what I did is I used three woods in an inlay. And I have two inlay templates I have to work with. So preparation was build the front wings and the body and I glued three pieces of wood together. At the other side is going to be maple, this is sycamore, and this is purple heart. In this uh, um, design we have a, an upper part and a lower part and we're going to overlap the two. We're going to put this one in first and then we're going to route right over the top of it so we get this overlap and these wings in the back. One thing we need to do is decide where we want it on the wood and then create a registration line across it. With this line I'm going to be able to line up my templates going across here and everything will match up. Just run it on an angle and that's where we're going to go with this. One thing is really nice, well let's cut out the, let's cut out this guy first. Okay, this is my stock that we're going to use, say it's going to do a sliding door or something. So we don't want to put any nails in here. So we're going to clamp this guy down. Figure out a clamping strategy. I'm going to use this piece of wood underneath just so I can clamp down. Keep everything still. The other thing we better remember to do is put the proper bushing on. Okay, now I'm free of my clamp, free of my clamp. OK, 
Okay, we still have some pieces. So now you look at your wood, and you start checking out the wings, see what kind of patterns coming through here. You see that? And then you just sort of decide, what are we going to do? We, do we want a vertical look to that wing? Or do we want the horizontal? I think the horizontal looks good. Inlay is this deep, so I need to get a mark on this outside edge and to cut it again. Oh yeah. That's the fish. That's ready to go. We're gonna cut right through there again. What I'm doing is, is I'm lining up this with my line and I'm overlapping it onto my initial inlay. And we're just going to take it, clamp it down for a second, and we're going to run a pencil around that. I'm overlapping my inlay, and I want to see how this one's going to match up with this original inlay we just cut. So I'm going to take this bushing, and I'm going to draw, oops, you moved a little bit, we're going to draw in where the router's going to go. This is what my cut's going to look like. And right here, it's not quite matching up to here. So we want to move the whole template back just a little bit. Because what we want to do is get this seam out of here. Mm -hmm. The big bushing is to cut out your wood stock to create the hollow for the inlay. The little bushing is made to do the inlay, act, the actual inlay. And it's very easy to forget. And when you do, you'll have a terrible match. Okay, so now we have the void with the second cut. We've cut through our original inlay, and now we just have one more step. and Make the butterfly's wings in its body. And I'm lining up the body. Because it's a straight edge, I'm just guessing at the middle of it. I'm watching how much of a gap the sycamore is on either side of the lower body. I'm watching the head to see if the two points are just about the same balance. Sort of centering it. Hey, that's working. So probably uh, this end, but the sound will take. That's a nice one. Oh. Routing inlays go tend to go to simplistic lines, smooth, rounded lines. You don't get sharp, crisp edges, and so style is sort of uh, you sort of lean towards simple styles. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what do you think? And that concludes today's episode of Woodworks. Thank you once again to John Mance. A very, very interesting demonstration, John. Very informative, thank you. And thank you all for watching. We hope we'll see you again next time. Goodbye for now. Stay tuned to Woodworks. Timothy Lidgate will now give us some general woodworking and safety tips.
my name is Timothy Lydgate. Any little personal habit you can develop to make that safety part of your routine is going to be really useful. If you just develop little shop habits like that and it avoids all kinds of accidents because you're you do get distracted. Stuff happens or you're in, on a deadline. Deadlines are usually when accidents happen. And uh, any little personal habit you can develop to make that safety part of your routine is going to be really useful. And one absolute no-no that I want to take a minute and just share because I've done it, I'm sure everyone has, and uh, don't, is if you're cutting a piece of wood, never use both of these at the same time. In other words, don't put a piece like this thinking, oh, I've got it really well held now. It's nice and solid here and it's solid here. Because what's going to happen is chances are, and I can't explain how it's going to happen, I'm just telling you it will, something's going to wiggle at the very end as this lets go and this piece is going to get bound in there. It's going to twist a little bit and it's going to come shooting back out at a great rate of speed and it's going to be very dramatic. So don't use both of these. If you're using the cross-cut fence, you want this out of here. You want lots of room so nothing's going to bind. If you're using this, then these are away and you're focused on holding on to the stock as it passes through the saw. You take any kind of square that you know to be square, a little T-square, a little whatever kind of device you have, a framing square that you know is 90 degrees, and you just set it up against the blade, and here you'd want to get the blade up a little higher so you can get the full diameter, and you just bring it up and adjust it till you get where you want to be and tighten it down good and solid and then I would take a piece and run it through and test it. Take a look and see if it's an exact square or not and if it's not, adjust it. It's just a process of going back and forth and back and forth until you get where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And actually, I should mention that. This is something I've learned over the years. Anytime you're doing a lamination that has multiple pieces, you're often going to be picking them up and making sure that there's no funny angles or whatever, and invariably, they come apart. <laughs> so what I do, it's felt like a bit of waste of tape for a long time, but I'll just, anything before I pick it up, it's more than one piece, more than two pieces. I just put together like that. And then when you grab it, you got a little bit of better chance that it's not going to come flying apart in your hands. To uh, make this stuff, I take uh, syringes, which I order courtesy of my doctor. These are 60cc lure lock syringes, and they're great for epoxy. You put the hardener in one and the epoxy in the other, and you've got a really accurate system of measuring small amounts of epoxy. If you're doing a boat or something, you can do a whole tub and paint it around, but for something like this, we may use, this might take a half a cc of epoxy to glue these four parts together, so I figure waste not, want not. And I mount these little finishing sanders upside down so that I can put the full weight of my body against the material, against the sandpaper, and it gives a nice kind of polish or burnish to the wood. It's really awkward trying to hold those sanders against a small piece of stock. Mm -hmm.